Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take an example where we have three parallel branches and we're trying to determine the current in each of the three branches. We can get that done by assuming that the first two branches are like one parallel branch relative to the third one. In other words, we're going to combine these two, R1 and R2, into one equivalent resistor and then act, make that act as if it was the other branch. So we'll, go, we'll do the following. We're going to find the equivalent resistance for branch 1 and 2 combined. And of course, we're going to use the product of the sum rule, which means that will be R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So this will now be the what we call the other branch to the third branch. So now we use that method where we say that the current I in the third branch is equal to I entering the branch point right here times the ratio of the resistance of the other branch which is of course this right here R12 divided by the sum R12 plus R3. This should be a 3 right here, not a very good looking 3. All right, now the R12, let's expand that and see what that looks like. So this becomes equal to I times R12 is this quantity right here. So in the numerator, we get R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And in the denominator on the left side, we get the same thing. We get R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And then we add R3 to that. Now all we have to do is simplify that algebraically and that's not that hard to do because what we can see here is we have an R1 plus R2 in the denominator, we have it here. If we multiply this by R1 plus R2 we get another denominator like that. So this is I times R1 R2 over R1 plus R2 and in the denominator we get R1 R2 over R1 plus R2 plus, and then here we write this as R3 times R1 plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now notice we have an R1 plus R2 in every one of the denominators, in the numerator here and in both portions of the denominator, which means we can multiply the top and the bottom by R1 plus R2, which means this then simplifies to I times in the numerator, we simply get R1 times R2 divided by, in the denominator here, we get R1 times R2 plus, and then we have left R3 times R1 plus R2, like this. And then, if we multiply out the denominator, we get the final form, and so again, this is simply finding I3. So let me write that down over here. So we can say that I3 is equal to the current entering the three branch or the branch point of the three branches times in the numerator we get R1 times R2 and in the denominator if we multiply everything out we'll get R1 times R2 plus R1 times R3 plus R2 times R3. And that is then the final form of finding the current in the third branch. Now here we see a pattern. Notice if we're looking for I3, in the numerator we get the product of R1 times R2. In the denominator we have every one of the combinations, R1 with R2, R1 with R3, and R2 with R3. So if we expand that to the other two currents, we get the following two, uh, the next two equations. So we have I2 is equal to I times, and here in the numerator we're going to have R1 times R3 because we have an I2 here, so we have R1 times R3 divided by the same combination in the denominator, R1, R2 plus R1 times R3 plus R2 times R3. And that will be the current in the second branch, and then to find the current in the top branch, I1, we find it as follows, I1 is equal to I times R2 times R3, so whatever current we have here, that number does not appear in the numerator, divided by R1, R2, plus R1, R3, plus R2, R3. Like this. And so there's an equation for all three of the currents 
That's what we do when we'll find the current in each of the three branches. We can go ahead and use these three equations right here. Once you see the pattern, it's fairly straightforward and it's actually easier to find the three currents, which we'll show you how to do in the next video. But that's how we do it when we have three branches.